Right mates, how's it going? In today's video, it's chapter 6 of The Last Guardian by Jeff Grubb. I've just had my second vaccine dose about 20 minutes ago, so if I start mumbling like I've had a stroke, that's why. Let's go! Medivh was gone a week, all told, but it was a week well spent for Khadgar. Khadgar did receive some responses from the mages at the Violet Citadel. Guzbar wanted more transcripts of poems, especially ones about Aegwyn. Lady Delth claimed she hadn't received any of the things Khadgar sent, and asked if he could send them all again, which was probably a load of bollocks. And Lady Alonda was adamant that there had to be a fifth breed of troll, and the whole joke here is that Lady Alonda is the one that's actually correct. But sod all of them, Khadgar thought. They can wait. These visions are more important. The key to Khadgar's incantation, it seemed, would be a simple spell of far-seeing. A divination that granted sight of distant objects and far-off locations. It was priestly magic of the holy sort. And before anyone says, no it's not Buttress, it's a shaman spell. Well, human clerics used it as well, so go suck a whole bag of totems or something. But with a bit of modification, so that it worked over time instead of space, Farsight was just the thing a mage would need to tame some visions. But refitting a spell for a new activity wasn't as simple as changing the words or altering the hand gestures. It required a deep and precise understanding of how the spell actually worked. And the best way to figure out how a spell worked was to fail in spectacular fashion and see what happens. Of course, there was the potential for this to result in Khadgar exploding himself, but what whatevs. But after about five days, Khadgar had gained a full understanding of the Farsight thing and built the framework for his wizardy time version. Any bits of misplaced time within the tower would be highlighted, glow a little brighter, feel a little hotter, and an added bonus to the spell that Khadgar had not anticipated is that it would tune the vision a little better as well removing the distortion and clarifying what individuals were actually saying. So no more of that mere nonsense, unfortunately. So, on the evening of the fifth day, Khadgar headed to Medivh's fully equipped pantry of spell components and grabbed a whole bunch of necessary ingredients. Amethyst, rose quartz runes, you know, the basics. And then, back at the library, he began casting his new spell. Bring me a vision. Bring me a vision of a young Medivh. There was a rush of air, and the library began to transform as it had before, but as the temperature dropped quite drastically, and Khadgar found himself now stood knees deep in a bank of snow, he started to think he might have possibly summoned the wrong vision. Ahead of him, moving up the veil, was an army of demons with great bat-like wings. However, a woman then came up from behind Khadgar, radiating her own sense of brilliant power. Khadgar had absolutely no doubt that she could see him, but she paid him no mind, and simply observed the approaching demon army, completely unafraid of it, and her eyes well, Khadgar recognised those eyes. He'd felt that same penetrating gaze before, from her son. This was Aegwyn, mother of Medivh. He was witnessing her epic battle against the demon hordes, which coincidentally, or maybe not so coincidentally, just so happened to be chronicled in the poem that Medivh had most recently been looking for, the last time Khadgar saw him. Aegwyn then frowned slightly, with a storm of power flashing within her eyes, and it didn't take long at all for the anger to be released. With a simple raising of her arm, and a little chant, she summoned a shard of elemental lightning that arced through the air, and struck a whole bunch of demons down. It was one of the most effective mystic bolts Khadgar had ever seen. Even the demons that weren't hit recoiled in shock. However, that only lasted but a moment before the army bellowed and charged. And Aegwyn didn't flinch. In fact, she was smiling. That sort of knowing smug smile of someone that felt pretty bloody confident that they were going to win. And then an epic battle ensued, right up until she was face to face with a larger demon, presumably their commander. You are a fool, Guardian of Tirisfal. Am I, Falspawn? I came here to spoil your dragon hunt. Seems that I've succeeded. You are an overconfident fool. Every incubus and petty demon, every nightmare and shadow hound, every dark lord and captain of the Burning Legion, all have come here while you have fought these few. I know. You know? You know that you were alone in the wilderness with every demon raised against you. You know. I know. I knew you'd bring as many of your allies as possible. A guardian is too great a target to resist. And yet you came anyway, alone, to this forsaken place. Oh, I never said I was alone. Aegwyn then snapped her fingers, and the sky suddenly darkened, as if a great flock of birds had been disturbed and were now blocking the sun. Except, it wasn't bloody birds. There were more dragons in the sky than you could shake a stick at. More dragons than Khadgar had ever even imagined existed. Falspawn of the Burning Legion, it is you that are the fool. Exploding gory sound. I wasn't supposed to say <laughs> I wasn't supposed to say that out loud. 
Another epic battle ensued, but at the centre of the demon army, something sinister was happening. Powerful spellcasters were chanting away, desperately trying to achieve something, and Aegwim just kind of stood there, grinning, whilst chanting her own dark and inhuman spell. Khadgar didn't recognise it, and had no idea what she was doing, other than possibly fighting the spell the demons were constructing. But that seemingly failed because a huge flash then erupted from the centre of the demonic horde, a full-on rip in the universe appeared, and Khadgar watched in horror as a god emerged. It was a titanic figure, larger than any giant of myth, greater than any dragon. Sargeras. Guardian, the time of Tyr's fall is about to end. This world will soon bow before the onslaught of the Legion. Not as long as there is a Guardian. Not as long as I live. Surrender now. I have use of your power. Never. Then die, Guardian, and let your world die with you. Aegwin then raised both hands and unleashed a shout, half curse and half prayer, and a flaming rainbow of colours erupted from her palms and struck at Sargeras's chest. It seemed to Khadgar like shooting a pea at a brick wall, and yet Sargeras actually staggered back under the blow, and the wound in his chest then seemed to slowly expand, consuming his flesh. Sargeras regarded the growing devastation with surprise, then alarm, then slight frustration about the whole thing, and then fear, touching the wound only to see it spread to his limb as well. Sargeras then started chanting a spell of his own, his words growing louder and more passionate, and then he started to glow. But Aegwin then unleashed yet another bolt of lightning, and then it was over. The titanic Sargeras fell forward and face planted the ground, and Aegwin started laughing and walked down the hill towards her vanquished foe. And then Khadgar was back in the library. He immediately pulled out a pen and some paper and started jotting down everything he'd seen. He was almost in a trance and wasn't really thinking much about what he was writing. <clears throat> Khadgar turned to see Morose staring at him, slightly annoyed by the interruption. The Magus is back. Wants you up at the observatory level. Medivh's back. That's what I said, isn't it? You're to fly to Stormwind with him. Stormwind? Me? Why? Because you're his apprentice, that's why. Okay. Uh, let me just gather my things up. Finish this. Take your time. It's only the Magus that wants you to fly to Stormwind Castle. Nothing important. Top level. Chop chop. Rose then buggered off and Khadgar stood there for a moment, but the news of Medivh's return and the fact that they were about to go to Stormwind had disrupted Khadgar's train of thought about the vision. So he quickly looked at the last thing he'd written in his notes and saw the words, Aegwin had two shadows. What the hell did that mean? He didn't outright remember writing that, or even necessarily noticing it, consciously. Oh well, probably nothing to worry about. So Khadgar gathered his tools and things, and off he went. And we're leaving it there! I quite like the structure of this book, even if the chapters are all a bit long. It's like Khadgar makes himself a sandwich, and now here's a major lore event from Warcraft history. I think all books should be like that. Geralt of Rivia poured himself an orange juice, and 1500 years ago a cataclysmic collision of parallel universes known as the Conjunction of the Spheres while humans mods are magic. <laughs> as usual, links in the description for the book, my Patreon page, my Discord, all of that stuff. If you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, all of that bollocks. And all that's left to say is, thanks for watching, and see ya!